Looks like Sony and Microsoft are butting heads over ownership of the Call of Duty franchise once again. This time it's about keeping the title on the Sony game store for only three more years, following the Microsoft gaining the rights to the franchise after its Blizzard acquisition. It seems that this game of digital hot potato will continue for a while longer, but in the meantime, here's everything we know so far. Jim Ryan, the CEO of PlayStation, has recently responded to Microsoft's offer to continue keeping the Call of Duty series available on the PlayStation Store for another three years after Sony's Activision contract finally comes to an end. Far from being happy about the commitment, Ryan says it is inadequate on so many levels. Last week, Phil Spencer, the head of Xbox, said that Microsoft was committed to keeping Call of Duty on PlayStation beyond the current deal that Sony had with Activision, which only covers the next three releases, including Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 in October. These comments were made shortly after UK's Competition and Markets Authority regulator displayed concern about Microsoft's decision to withhold or degrade Blizzard's content from other consoles once the $68.7 billion acquisition deal goes through. Ryan expressed his disappointment with Spencer while speaking publicly about the deal, making it clear that several more years was actually just the extra three years left once Sony's marketing deal ends. What's more, this isn't something new. People have been worried about what could happen to Activision games after Microsoft's acquisition goes through for quite some time now. Confirmation about the next three games in the series being released on the platform came back in January, but there's been little information on what will happen to the franchise's PlayStation existence once the contract expires. Although Microsoft gave some vague, non-exclusivity promises back in February last month, Sony voiced concerns to Brazil's competition regulator about what could happen to PlayStation titles like Call of Duty if the acquisition gets approved. Microsoft countered its claim by arguing that its purchase wouldn't damage the industry at all, and accused Sony of actually being afraid of the Xbox Game Pass, even calling the company hypocritical based on its own exclusivity deals. Sony explained that even if another studio made something similar to Call of Duty, it wouldn't be able to replicate the success of the long-running shooter. Keep in mind, it's dedicated and extensive fan base. The Japanese giant is also at risk of losing a lot of money if Call of Duty does end up disappearing from the PlayStation Store since it's one of its largest sources of revenue from any of the third-party publishers on the platform. Microsoft will be needing to give a lot more guarantees of the franchise's future to Sony, especially if their competition fears that the franchise is being examined by regulators in the UK, Europe, the US, and elsewhere. The CMA is also moving to the second phase of an investigation that'll appoint an independent panel in order to determine whether Microsoft monopolistic control over games games such as Call of Duty and World of Warcraft could end up harming rivals. Furthermore, it seems that Microsoft is growing tired of Sony's complaints. As Microsoft continues to face deeper scrutiny over its $70 billion deal to acquire Activision Blizzard, Sony seems to be enjoying poking its ribs at every turn. Whenever any new regulatory action gets mentioned, Sony quickly leaps in with a common complaint. Mostly they're worried about Microsoft getting complete control of Call of Duty, though their arguments make little sense, given their own history of exclusive content. At this point, Microsoft is clearly starting to get annoyed with Sony's constant protestations. Phil Spencer even brought up the fact that Microsoft had decided to sign a deal with Sony to keep Call of Duty on the platform. They've continued to swear that Call of Duty isn't going anywhere on PlayStation, even if Microsoft decides to offer an enticing alternative by offering it on their Game Pass. You can clearly sense their frustration in their new statement in response to Sony. It makes zero business sense for Microsoft to remove Call of Duty from PlayStation, given its market-leading console position. It's also been theorized that Microsoft would also most likely treat Call of Duty just like its Minecraft acquisition and let the franchise continue to exist on all platforms, even on rival consoles like PlayStation. As a publisher, this means that Sony will be paying Microsoft directly after all. Let's look at some other examples as well. You can argue that if PlayStation is supposed to be a market market leader, then why isn't Microsoft releasing games like Starfield there? Sure, it may be a new IP, but would Microsoft consider releasing
releasing any future Doom, Wolfenstein, and Elder Scrolls games on PlayStation even though they are the market leader. However, Sony's complaints are just not resonating. It's hard to allow the video game giant to be this whiny since they've been dominating console sales for an entire generation and a half now. To believe that Call of Duty by itself is somehow some make or break title for them is doubtful at the least. Neither party is completely blameless in these back and forths, but it's much harder to take Sony's arguments seriously, and we understand why Microsoft is growing tired of their pushback. It's so clearly self-serving that we can't even see it any other way. In the end, we doubt that it will end up tanking the deal, and we'll also see if Microsoft decides to make good on its word in the coming years. Not to mention, there's another reason for that as well. It looks like Sony just isn't afraid of losing Call of Duty exclusively. They aren't afraid of losing the pieces of content to Call of Duty. What they're really afraid of is the thought that gamers will end up getting better value with the Xbox Game Pass, losing the ability to decide the rules over how gaming operates as a whole. Epic Games has also shown its ability to use its user base as a weapon when arguing against taxes, such as Sony Crossplay fee that they tried to impose on developers. So could it be possible for Epic Games and Microsoft to band together and try to force Sony into removing the boundaries on crossplay altogether? It's hard to say. Sony's actively choosing to block crossplay, and they're obviously doing it to make it harder for people to choose anything other than the biggest platform. The only people who are making a loss in this equation are Sony execs and their millionaire shareholders, who see PlayStation's clout as a tool to dictate prices and anti-competitive practices such as blocking crossplay. Meanwhile, in other Call of Duty news, first off, we finally know when Warzone 2.0 is coming out. So far, Activision has been pretty hush-hush with any and all details about the sequel to Call of Duty Warzone, but we may finally get some concrete details during the Call of Duty next event. During the recent stream, Infinity Ward revealed that Warzone 2.0 will be released alongside the Season 1 content of Modern Warfare 2. Since we already know that Season 1 is coming out on the 16th of November, there's a good chance that when Warzone 2.0 will be coming out as well. This is very similar to how Activision originally launched the very first Warzone back in 2020. The free-to-play Battle Royale began as just a mysterious new mode that was added to Modern Warfare 2019 until it got so popular that it pretty much took over all of the Call of Duty ecosystem. Next up, Warzone 2.0 is bringing back third-person mode. Remember third-person mode? Well, it's back but temporarily. It's yet unclear as to what extent it'll be implemented in the final game. The studio describes this third-person mode as a mod that can be turned on for any multiplayer mode, and that includes Warzone 2.0. However, it doesn't look like they're committing to third person, but if it ends up proving popular, it could potentially stick around. It definitely looks much snazzier than the original Modern Warfare 2 third person mode from back in 2009. It was janky and weird, but it sure had its fans. It'll also give players the ability to see around corners without peeking, a move that PUBG players are already familiar with. And lastly, Warzone 2.0 will feature brand new game modes. Activision and Infinity Ward have recently revealed several new features coming to Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2's multiplayer section. One of the new modes added to the new and improved Warzone is Raid, a 3v3 team deathmatch mode that focuses on team communication and coordination. This mode won't be available at launch, coming later before the end of 2022. Another two-player co-op mode called Special Ops is also being revamped with so-called large-scale hot zones. The weapon customization system is also reportedly being improved to allow unprecedented opportunities for customization. The new interface will also allow much smoother swaps between weapons, meaning, hopefully, we won't have to cycle through five different menus just to put on a silencer. Although Infinity Infinity Ward has yet to elaborate on any changes being made. Hopefully, it'll expand the mode beyond what was originally delivered back during 2019's Modern Warfare, since it was arguably the weakest part of the package. That's a wrap for this video. What are your thoughts on the ownership debate between Microsoft and Sony? Let us know in the comments below. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. See you in the next one.